So at the start of 2021, in a meeting with my CPA, I found out that I had a $16,000 tax bill for the year of 2021. Now, the bad part about that is, is that $16,000 of my income that's going out of the window that I have to pay to the United States government. The good part about it is, is that my CPA made me aware of it at the beginning of the year. So we've been paying that money throughout the year instead of waiting to the end of the year to have to pay that money because there's a penalty that comes with that if you wait until the end of the year. So what I'm gonna do today in this video is I'm gonna clue you in on what you need to know to make sure you get ahead of your tax payments. So come on inside, sit back, relax, and let's get down into the business. So now, as you can probably imagine, my CPA told me that I had a $16,000 tax bill that had to be paid. The first thing that came to my mind is, where is the trick? Where is our trick at? We hear all of this stuff about business people, Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos not having to pay taxes. So I was thinking, okay, so he at any minute is going to tell me, okay, well, this is the way around it. This is the loophole. This is the way we're going to have to navigate this so that you don't have to pay that $16,000. But that never came. As a matter of fact, he started putting a schedule together to tell me when I had to pay this money. I had to pay it on April 15th, June 15th, September 15th, and then January 15th for four total payments. And in that four total payments, I had to pay a total of $16,000. Now, if you don't have a problem with simple math, you'll soon figure out that's about $4,000 for each of those four payments. Four times four is 16,000. If you had 20,000, you'll be paying $5,000 each of those payments. But as a business owner, you have to plan for that because not only do you have to pay your regular expenses, but you also have to pay this $4,000 or whatever your number Number is that you have to pay on your quarterly taxes to make sure that you've paid the total amount by January 15th. Now here's the deal. My CPA said you don't have to pay the quarterly tax payments. If you don't want to make the $4,000 payment, you don't have to. We can wait until the end of the year to make that payment. But here's the caveat that comes with that. You'll have to pay a penalty if you wait until the end of the year because self-employed people are not supposed to wait until the end of the year. Uncle Sam does not want to wait until the end of the year to get his money. He wants you to pay it throughout the year. Just like you were employed, if you are an employee, they withhold taxes. Well, you're supposed to pay those taxes if you're self-employed. So you might say to yourself, hey Brandon, how is it that employees get to get away and not have to pay quarterly tax payments? Well, they don't have to pay quarterly tax payments because they are having to pay withholding taxes. Every time they get paid, money is withheld for Social Security, Medicare, and income taxes. So they're paying it, they're just paying it on every paycheck. Whereas self-employed people, you'll pay it quarterly. So a good idea, a good rule of thumb in my opinion would be to set aside 30% of your pay every time you get paid. That way you're not in a bind when quarterly tax payments come due. How much do you have to pay in quarterly tax payments? Really good question. That's gonna depend on how much money you make. Me personally, I depend on a CPA to take care of that for me. There are some things that I think are worth paying for. A CPA is one of those expenses that I'm okay with because I've saved so much money using a CPA and I highly suggest that if you're a freight broker or self-employed person, at some point, you're gonna wanna consider a CPA. A CPA specializes in taxes. What I know about taxes is very little. And here's a guy or girl that specializes in that area I want to be able to use that service and I don't mind having to pay for it. Now, here's the deal. If you want to do it on your own, there's a calculation. It says to calculate your estimated taxes, you will add your total tax liability for the year, including self-employment taxes and income taxes, and then add any other taxes and divide that number by four. And that will give you your total tax payments that you're going to be paying quarterly. Who's responsible for paying quarterly tax payments? Self-employed individuals, independent contractors, and freelancers. All have to pay quarterly tax payments if you expect that you're going to have to pay at least $1,000 in taxes. If you're paying less than $1,000, then you can pay that amount at the end of the year. 
But here in the United States, if you're paying more than $1,000 or more, you have to pay that amount on a quarterly basis because we're on a pay-as-you-go tax system. The U.S. government does not want to wait until the end of the year. As a matter of fact, as we said earlier, if you wait until the end of the year and you owe more than $1,000, it will also come with a penalty. Now, I know it might be a real bummer to have to pay that kind of money in taxes for money to come into your business and then approximately 30% of it having to go out of the window in taxes. That's not what we all want to do. But that's the price that we have to pay to do business in the richest country in the world, the United States. And I know there are a lot of people say, you don't have to pay taxes. It's not according to the law that you pay taxes. But everybody that I see explore that end up going to jail. I'm not one that wants to go to jail, so I'm going to pay those taxes and pay those taxes on time. If I can't pay them, then I need to be talking to somebody about why I can't pay them and when I plan to pay them because this is a very serious issue. If you are not paying quarterly taxes right now, then that's something that you want to talk to your CPA about. Talk to your tax professional so that you can get set up if you are required to pay those taxes. Because at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to make sure that you are paying your taxes. And if you're not paying those, it could come back to haunt. Now I get it, it's probably not something that you become very excited about having to pay a lot of money in taxes. But here is something to think about. If you're not paying any money in taxes or you're paying very little of money in taxes, that means you're making zero to very little money. And if you wanna make more money then you want to pay more taxes because that just comes with it. Or you figure out how to not to pay taxes on the money that you make and not very many people have figured that out outside of the very affluent, the very rich like Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, those type of guys. I haven't gotten there yet. You probably haven't gotten there yet either. So until then, we have to pay taxes. That just comes as part of it. Now you may have noticed that my monitor, my Dell 49 inch monitor is broken. If you look on this side, you can see it and throughout you can see it. I did that transporting it. When you're moving these monitors, you're gonna make sure that you don't put anything on top of it. You wanna make sure that it is out of the way of everything else because they are very sensitive and you can hit it a little bit and you can cause this kind of problem. So make sure when you get a monitor or if you already have monitors, if you're moving those monitors, be extra careful not to mess it up like I have because I paid a thousand dollars for this monitor and now I have to go out and get a new monitor. Definitely got to have another, another one because this is my bread and butter. This is what I'm able to see a lot of different screens at one time and I really, really like this monitor so I'm going to have to get another one. So if you don't want to have to go out and spend extra money on monitors, make sure that when you're transporting them, you're taking extra good care of those monitors. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I certainly hope this information has been helpful. If you want to learn more about the freight broker business, I'll leave a link in the description. It's my five video series titled How the Load Movement Process Works. It will give you a look into the freight broker business, let you see how it works. That way, before you make a decision, you can look at it and then decide whether or not it's something that you want to do. And then if you want to know more about the load board and how we go in and search for trucks, post our loads, and use a rate sourcing tool to start forming our rate, I'll leave a free link right here. So until the next time, I wish you the very best in your life and business. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.